place where everyone felt comfortable. I didn't want it to be a club that was just one age, just for young people or just for older people or for um, straight people. I wanted it to be inclusive and I think we've been very successful at that. Um, our shows bring in all age groups, all types, gay, straight, black, white, uh, young, old, and I, I'm very, very proud of that. Like New York City, I think it takes a lot of different engines to get a, uh, an island or a neighborhood going. The Denver Center does uh, Shakespeare, um, plays, theatrical presentations. Uh, jazz at Jacks has live jazz, blues. You know, um, Appaloosa has uh, different kinds of live music. What we have here fits into the art scene, but it's, it's still kind of stepping back 30 to 40 years. And I think um, that's what we have to offer is even though we do have modern people, you know, I'm still alive, you're still alive, but we pretend it's 1930. And I think, gosh, this is gonna sound terrible, but I've called it a Casa Bonita for grown-ups <laughs> because it's got all the fun child stuff without the terrible food. <laughs> We thought the clock tower would be such a great location because everybody went by it. It was right downtown. It was a landmark. And then we learned that you can't put a sign out on a historic building. So all these people were walking by and we had no signage. This fabulous, brilliant designer, Lonnie Hands-On, uh, had just designed a costume for me. And we um, decided to open the club. And he'd always wanted to design a showroom. I think he's done pretty amazing job but my girlfriend and I love to go to Goodwill and Ark and we went we went to all these thrift stores and we got all these little pieces and the cowboy boots you see up there and then Lonnie took um, the a lot of the gathered the things that we did and um, you know sprayed them and created these amazing chandeliers this this is sort of an homage to my Patsy Decline country spoof character the cowboy boots and then there's this one over there that has clock pieces course there's a tribute to the clock tower and um, he did the glass on these beautiful sconces and created the with the copper wire and um, he's just an amazing amazing artist well every Thursday night um, I produce and MC a show it's called Naughty Pierre's burlesque and comedy and it's uh, kind of an old-fashioned throwback to Ed Sullivan days or the Colgate comedy hour black and white TV um, they're singing a lot of comedy, uh, a lot of pretty dancing ladies and visual aerial acrobatics. And I play this kind of uh, confused French man trying to get the show to run from beginning to end. Kind of like Kermit the Frog on the Muppet Show. <laughs> we have aerialists, we have stilt walkers, we have, you know, every, it runs the gamut. Ballet dancers, hula hoop people. So it was really a variety show and young people really, really took to it quickly. I'm not a trained musician. I don't read music. I just love to sing and love to perform and to reach that place in my career at this time in my life is, I'm very proud that the, the club was called Lanny's for 10 years. I'm very proud of that. Well, I'll be honest, I don't think we would have opened and lasted without her name. Um, she had a good track record, great track record. She's in the Colorado Hall of Fame right now. Um, so her name definitely said, you can trust this. And people did. They came down and her show was the one that was selling out every week as these other smaller shows were building around her, my, my show included. Um, so working with her was great. She had a face and a name that everyone knew. You didn't have to explain who she was or what she did. Um, she's got a really good eye for booking. Uh, she found a lot of great, talented people in the theater scene around town, but who maybe didn't have a nightclub show, and she would say, hey, you're this kind of voice, and here's this Stevie Wonder show that's waiting for an actor, and put them together. So she really had a good vision about the quality and, and the style of shows we do. The legacy that I want to leave behind is that 
uh, we entertained a lot of people and made a lot of people happy. That's the whole point of wanting to be, for, that's why I wanted to be an entertainer. I, I love working with an audience. So when you look out in the audience and you see people smiling or, or crying if you're singing a sad song, that is, that's the legacy that I'd like to leave. And I would like people to remember that old fashioned joint under the clock tower where you saw stuff you just don't see anywhere else in 2016.